What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Thursday, and welcome to this week's episode of Ask TNH Live. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and today we're going to be answering uh, Instagram's questions live. If you don't follow us already on Instagram, follow along at Theo and Harris. <laughs> All right, before we jump in, quick wristwatch check. I am wearing an ultra simplistic Tudor, a vintage Prince Oyster date in blue, 34 millimeters, oyster, steel, smooth bezel, Jubilee bracelet, cannot beat it. And it is available in the watch shop at theoandharris.com. But until it sells, it'll probably be on my wrist. All right, uh, the first topic I wanna dive into here, um, I was at an event last night. I went to a London jewelers event at Oculus, uh, downtown Manhattan at the World Trade Center. And um, I, was imp I was impressed by their selection and, and the, you know, the hors d'oeuvres were nice and the wine was good, but uh, what, what really, the, the, the chicken sandwiches were really good. <laughs> but what I'm really talking about here is um, really, really Tourneau, versus London and or for that matter Torneau versus Wempy or Torneau versus so many other companies. Um, I don't think that you can sell luxury watches on commission, right? Uh, I don't think you can sell luxury anything on commission. I almost don't think you can sell anything that's really, really worth owning um, on commission. You, you're ruining the entire experience, right? Um, there are two kinds of buyers, I suppose, in, in, the, in, in the luxury watch market, right? There's the person that one, cares about the experience and wants to walk into a physical store and hold and touch something. And then there's the person that's comfortable buying something online. The person who's buying something online expects, of course, customer service, quick replies and, 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 and good service, right? But the person that walks into a boutique right, to, 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 to try on a watch and to buy a watch is looking for an experience, right? They didn't just come in for the watch, right? If they did, they might have walked to 47th Street, right? Um, you can find these things places, right? Watches, these watches aren't all that incredibly elusive and rare, okay? So when you walk into a Tourneau, for example, um, you're badgered by sales assistants. Why? Because they're on commission, okay? Um, they're their biggest priority right now is to make sure that they can make commission and pay their rent and buy themselves shit, okay? That is bad from a consumer experience point of view for someone that's about to buy a luxury item, okay? When you walk into Wempy or London Jewelers, those people don't give a shit if you buy anything, really, because one, they don't own the store, and whether or not you buy something really, barely, it really doesn't affect their life in that way, and two, they are on a salary. Okay. When I've walked into Wempy or into London, they have had no problem ever letting me try on two, three, four, five watches. It doesn't matter. They're not doing anything and there's no pressure sale because if they sell you that watch right now, they don't really make anything else. Their bills are already paid in their contract and their agreement. And that, that is the way that the luxury sales need to be made. And if the luxury watch industry still thinks that they're going to you know, compete in the retail business, in the brick and mortar retail business, they have to rethink the entire experience that happens within that uh, experience. When, when someone walks in, when someone purchases, or even if they don't purchase, right? What is it like? Because right now, as far as I can see it, the only f***ing value prop to buying in a retail store is a bottle of water. I don't know, what do they sell? Champagne? Uh, give it to you, champagne? Great. I'd rather buy my own, you know, with the 40% I can go save buying online, I'll buy my own, you know, little bottle of Clicquot. I don't need your little bottle of Clicquot. I'll, I'll, buy, I'll buy mine, okay? Because even the regular bottle is only 45 bucks. Okay, I don't, I don't need your little champagne. Um, so so that's, a, that, that's, a, that's a remark, something that I observed last night. People in London were super nice. Um, they, uh, you know, they, they, they were just they were just ready to help you. It did not matter if you bought anything or didn't. That's it. I love that. And, and that's how I feel about 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 you know selling watches at the Owen Harris. It doesn't really matter to me if you buy a watch or not. It really doesn't. The only time I legitimately care if someone buys a watch is if I trek into the city, you know, when I wasn't going to go and uh, I bring watches and I spend money on drinks and all that. And it cost me a hundred bucks plus four hours. I could have been answering emails. And if someone doesn't buy anything, then yeah, that kind of does suck. I wish they did, right? Um, but then even then, they, they're fully entitled to not buy anything. I don't, you know, it's, it's, I don't take it personal. That's it. You don't want to buy it. So don't buy it, you know? But uh, but apart from and 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 believe me, when those few times that, that has happened, you know they could certainly couldn't tell that I was a little annoyed because it, that's not the point. The point is that you just you know make a beautiful experience for a client, make them feel like they're a member of your family, um, help them find the watch that's best for them, and that's it. That's what our job is. You know, my job isn't to uh, to to hound you to pay my rent. 
right? And and what's the funny part about it is, if if really the rent is the only thing you have in mind, you're going about it in the wrong way. I bet you get make a lot more rent if you're a little bit more welcoming and, and kind and a little slower and a little bit more willing to build a relationship. You know, that's where watches are sold in relationship. You know, how many people on this YouTube live or this is Instagram live and YouTube live? How many of you clients out there or you viewers out there um, had a question about watches in the watch industry? Shot me an email and it got answered. Right? Hundreds of you, probably over over or thousands, thousands, thousands of you probably um, have have shot emails and, ha and 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 you've received answers from the owners. Right? Did you offer to buy anything? Did you ask a question about something in the watch shop? No. No, I think it's incredibly important that we facilitate a company or facilitate a company kind of culture and environment that people will, that will reach out and talk to us, even if it's about a brand new Seiko that was just released. And even if my opinion is only a, you know, a three sentence, three sentence answer, that's what you're going to get. And you're going to get an answer. That's very, very important. And if you're not willing to do that, then, you know, don't complain to me when you don't know how to sell a f***ing watch, or when inventory doesn't move, or when, you know, when you can't pay your employees, you know, or when you have to restructure five times in three years, you know, or take on partners and do this and do that and go through a flash sale. It's because you f***ing suck. You know, it's not because your watches aren't any good, usually. It's because you're just, you, you don't know how to sell a f***ing watch. You know, that's the difference. Coffee's for closers. You know what it takes to sell real estate? takes brass balls to sell real estate. I've been amazed at the speed, accuracy, and emotion you give to every response. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. All right, one more question. No, two more questions. That was a long one. Do you have a favorite tank watch? All right, let's talk about uh, Cartier. Hold on, someone just said they never received a reply about servicing. Hey, Carlos, if you received, uh, uh, you sent me an email about servicing, please resend it. I apologize, you didn't get an answer. I, I promise you'll receive an answer tonight. Honest mistake. Um, what was the question? Uh, what is my favorite tank watch? Is the question that was just asked. Um, and a great question. And it is a question that I have uh, fairly recently in the last year or so become very, very um, conflicted about. Historically, since I am a pretty young boy, my favorite tank watch was the Santos Dumont, particularly um, the ultra thin model, uh, which was released in the 70s with an FP game movement, ultra, ultra, ultra thin, paper thin yellow gold. Um, then it became the Santos, I believe it was called the 100. Um, there was a smaller watch, a little thicker. I owned, I've owned both of those watches. And I never liked the Tank Louis. I found the Tank Louis to be a very, the Tank Louis, to be a very boring watch. Um, I didn't like it. Nothing about it spoke to me. I sold both Cartiers um, and I ended up with a Tank Louis on my wrist. And I wear it five days a week. I love it. I absolutely love it. The simplicity is incredible. The, 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 the size of it is sleek. I feel Andy Warhol on my wrist. And I think that's so cool. Uh, that's a beautiful thing about watches. You know, unlike a lot of other um, items that you can buy and own, you can legitimately be um, um, connected to important people in the past, influential people. Uh, I, I, I don't own a jacket my idol zone, right? That usually isn't the case. Um, I don't own a tie my idol zone, right? But I can own a watch that some really interesting people owned, right? Like uh, Truman Capote. You know, I read In Cold Blood when I was a freshman in high school. No, freshman in college, maybe? Freshman in college, I read In Cold Blood. Um, and I remember all I wanted was a Cartier tank. Not that he spoke about it in the book, but I just remember um, reading it, uh, having no connection to the book itself, but feeling connected to Truman Capote. You know, I, I, you know, it was kind of weird. I mean, I, I was so interested and I, I read more about him elsewhere. I saw the movie that Phil Hoffman was in. It was a really good movie. Um, and his vanity, right, was kind of exemplified within that watch. Because uh, it, is, it is a vain watch. You know, as Andy Warhol said, you know, it's, I don't wear the Cartier tank for the time. I wear the Cartier tank because it's the watch to wear, um, which is true. It's true. That's it, guys. I'm going to get out of here. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Ask Teenage Live. Uh, don't forget, to check out the watch shop at theoandharish.com uh, for vintage watches or the best damn handmade leather straps in the business. And if you don't believe me, shoot us an email and I will send you testimonials uh, because it is true. No one makes a leather strap like Jean Rousseau and no one sells the sexiest Jean Rousseau straps and better than Theo and Harris. I'll see you guys all tomorrow on Like a Run.